the other place, though, I think that human-computer interaction uh, and other techniques of, of, of interface design are interesting are in helping to solve nagging legal problems that the law is just unbelievably bad at solving. Right? And that's the basis of this presentation to some extent. I'm going to go through it very quickly on, uh, for time constraint here. Um, but this, again, is just an example of one of the things that I'm interested in. So in law, notice, disclosure, the idea that you tell somebody something, what's going on, is an enormously popular form of regulation. We use notice all the time to solve legal problems. Um, so for instance, uh, let's say that you have a hair dryer and you can, you know, and you want to make this hair dryer as safe as possible, and it's mostly safe, but if you put it into water, right, that's going to be a big problem, it's going to electrocute you. Now, you could make waterproof hair dryers, but that would be enormously expensive, no one would want to do that. So what do you do? Well, you put a good warning, it's called in the law, on the hair dryer, so don't use it in water, there you go. Someone uses it in, in water, then that's on them, right? So we shift liability with notice. Um, we want to be able to pe have people interrogate others uh, in law enforcement and, and do a really robust interrogation, but you have these rights. So how do we have good, clever, creative interrogation that gets the, the bad guy at the same time preserve these rights? Well, we'll notify you what your rights are. That's what Miranda's about. So there's many, many different examples of that. Um, and so it's very popular for a variety of reasons. And I'm, again, I'm doing a very much abridged version of this, I should, I should say. Um, but it, it's junky. It's terrible. It fails. And everybody knows it fails. It's awful. Right? Notice is awful online, it's in particular, but everywhere. Right? So it fails in these extremely well understood ways. Um, having to do with our inherent limitations. I'm not going to go through this whole standard behavioral economics arguments here, but uh, basically understand that notice doesn't usually work because people don't read it and they don't understand it when they do read it um, and no one sort of takes it the same way. And again, I apologize for going through this very really quickly. Um, and sometimes it's even worse than that in the sense that sometimes it's worse than having no notice at all, right? So I mean, I, 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 this is a, this is one of these are two of my favorite examples here. Um, this happened to me sort of in an airport once, right? So I'm, I'm traveling to give a talk at, in an airport, and I see this the Homeland Security system, and it's at it's at Orange, it's never below Orange, right? It hasn't been below Orange for, for many many years now. They're thinking about eliminating guarded and low because it would be irresponsible for anybody to ever do that. So basically, you're, you're scared or a little more scared, but it's not, it's not operationalizable, right? I mean, you, you know, you, what are you going to do? You buy duct tape. I don't know what you're supposed to do if you, if you see the differences, right? The other one, too, is that in, in California, all over the place, you see these, uh, these uh, examples where everything, the parking lot here, just down the street, the, it, this area is known to the, to the state of California to, cause, to cause, uh, have chemicals that cause cancer. Again, I saw this getting onto a plane Getting onto a plane on the, on the little runway there, I can't turn around. Going onto this plane, I'm, what am I supposed to do? You know, like drink green tea? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. It just makes me more nervous than, it, than if it weren't there at all. Um, and so one of the problems that we have in online privacy is that um, you're, you're, and, and, and this is sort of, you know, uh, just one example, again, of the ways that I think we can think about uh, leveraging design, is that <laughs> That notice is supposed to solve the problem of online privacy. So what's the online privacy problem? Basically, it's the idea that a lot of information about you is being collected when you go online, right? You're being tracked online, but it doesn't feel like you are. You have no me way of knowing just how much you're being tracked. And so the way we've tried to pr solve that problem is by having these things called privacy policies, which I'm sure everybody here has seen, and they don't, they don't work. Why don't they work? Nobody reads them. Nobody ever reads them. When they do read them, they don't say much, they don't make sense, they're in legalese, but it's actually just like in the examples of California Prop uh, uh, 65, it's worse than if not, because there's evidence that people see the words privacy policy on uh, a particular website, and they believe that that means that the website has a policy of privacy that means certain specific things about what they can and cannot do with your data. When in fact, if you were to actually click on the link, it, it could be anything. We give your data away. If you want some data, here's the number to call. You know, it, it, it could be a bathroom wall. That's what I'm saying. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. All the obligation that you have is that you actually have to do it. Um, so, and, and, and the problems are obvious. Uh, uh, to be ef effective, it, has to, it would have to be, at the same time, complex and intelligible. Um, no one has time to read these policies. Um, you don't understand them, et cetera. It's, it's a little bit like, um, instead, of, instead of driving along um, on the uh, uh, highway and seeing a bunch of um, you know, instructions, this is how fast you're supposed to go, this is your exit, that kind of thing, it would be like getting one sign 
that you, when you got on the highway that said everything that you needed to know about the highway. Every last thing, like, this is the speed limit here, there's going to be a work zone in a couple of miles, just so you know, and then you'd be able to revisit it every once in a while and be like, what was that? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's impossible. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And so um, the alternatives are poor. Um, and, so, and so, again, I, this, like, this notion that our lives are increasingly mediated by technology translates into this idea that we have this particular danger where we might be manipulated, where um, we might have these effects that are, that are unintended or intentional, um, and the law should be thinking about them, but also there might be these techniques. So um, I, I've been thinking about this idea of visceral notice. Um, but, actually, this morning I discovered that the New York Times uh, called it um, silly but surprisingly effective. So <laughs> I'll take it. That's great. Um, but anyway, the idea is that it shores up the gap between what's actually happening to you, which is the fact that you're being tracked online, and how it actually feels to you um, without the use of these long symbolic languages like a privacy policy, okay? Because those aren't working, because for all the reasons that I might say. Um, and some examples of what I mean by visceral notice are things like pain. So pain is a kind of a good example. So the first time you stub your toe, I don't know about you, first time I stubbed my toe, it hurt, obviously, and I thought to myself, like, you know, why, does, why do I have to have pain here? You know what I mean? Like, why can't, uh, uh, why can't I just uh, have, like, a little alert that says, you know, toe stubbed? You know what I mean? Like, kind of that kind of thing. Well, why do I actually have to feel pain here? And, but when you think about it, pain conveys a remarkable amount of information in a very short period of time. So it tells you, you know, where the problem is, its severity, it tells you duration, it tells you kind, a burn is different from a stub. All these different, all these different things. So anyway, my point of the matter is, is and, and this is the last thing I'll say about this, is I believe we might be able to use these same sort of techniques where you convey notice not through written words or symbolic language, but by changing people's experience of what they're doing. And I think that that's a really interesting way to try to solve legal problems. So just one example. When you enter something into Google, you're getting tracked to some extent. It's creating a log. You're typing something into it, and it's remembering you know, the log of what you said. It's remembering you know, what time you said it. It's linking it to other logs, potentially. Um, and yet, it doesn't feel like that at all, does it? Right? When you write something into Google, it just feels like you're you know, having a little transaction. There's no reason for you to understand that, you're, that the log is being created and that kind of thing. Um, there's a little link at the bottom. You can see that says privacy, but no one, you know, no one does it. And everybody thinks that means that they have good privacy. And Google actually does have pretty good privacy. So, um, But anyway, com compare that experience to a Microsoft uh, promotion called Miss Dewey. Compare the experience of writing in something controversial into this text field to doing it into this text field. Okay? Right here. I want to know about something controversial. I want to know about um, you know, some kind of uh, disease I'm worried that I might have. I'm going to type in that name of that disease and get a bunch of results versus this. Now what is this? This is a fully anthropomorphic agent that they made called Miss Dewey. I don't know if anyone ever saw Miss Dewey operating for longer than it was supposed to, actually. It was supposed to be like a little short promotion. It was so popular, it continued to go. Miss Dewey, when you show up to the, to the uh, website, Miss Dewey actually says, you know, welcome. Uh, how can I help you search? And then comments on your searches. Just tell me what you want. You put it in there and it actually says, oh, I see you're searching for this. If you don't search for something immediately, Miss Dewey leans forward and taps on the screen and goes, hey, I don't have all day here, right? So this is sort of fully anthropomorphic thing. This, I would argue, is a very different information transaction. Miss Dewey's gone, but there's another version called Ouija that's out there right now. Um, so I'm, I'm going to end here because I, I don't... Uh, want to uh, monopolize the time here, and we'll have more time for conversation. But just understand that I think that there are really interesting um, potential dangers and potential improvements uh, that, might be, that might happen as a result of interface design. And the reason I bring up this example is um, if you feel like you're having a conversation with an agent, if, if, you're, if, if this is a social technology, they're a hard way to understand, you're going to understand that there's someone on, potentially on the back end that is able to see. You're going to see the tracking in a way that you won't understand from, from the privacy policy. So uh, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.